Welcome into another Teacher Tutorial Tuesday. My name is Coach Suho with Greater Richmond Fit for Kids here to talk to you about draggable items and drop zones in your boom cards. Draggable items are a great way to add manipulatives to your boom cards, whereas drop zones are a way that you could have kids sort things into different categories on your boom cards. In this video, I hope to tackle how to make an item draggable. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about drop zones and uh, some tips and tricks with them. Then we'll talk about how you can actually randomize your answer choices without you having to physically move them around. It's awesome. Oh, and there's a bonus tip at the end by my cat, Nora. Well, I like to call it a Nora Nugget. While I get the boom cards ready, I'd love it if you dropped a comment down below about what you'd like to see in a future Teacher Tutorial Tuesday video. All right, here we are over in our boom deck. This one is for counting money up to $2. This is where I first experimented with draggable items. Let's jump over here to show you what I mean. So these coins right here are all draggable because they have the hand icon on them. If we click on them, you'll notice that draggable is highlighted over here or outlined over here. Let's see what that looks like in the actual card in our preview mode. You can click on a coin and you can move it. So if I wanted to count these coins, it might be easier for me to organize them in a different way, like this. Then I can go ahead and count them and type my answer over here. All right, here we are on a card that we've added some coins to, and we have our answer is 15 cents, but we want to make these draggable so that the kids can move them around and order them however they want. What we're going to do is you're going to click on a coin, and then you're going to click over here to draggable. That's it. If you want to click on multiple, or if you want to change multiple coins, what you can do is click on one, hold down the shift key, and then click on each of the other ones that you want to make draggable and then click draggable. A little bonus tip for you. Let's take a look at an example of a drop zone that I've used. So here it asks for one cent coins to be put in the bank. Actually, there's an audio file that explains to students how to do this. If you want to know more about that, check out one of our previous videos on voiceovers in Boom Cards. So we are told to click and drag the coins into the drop zone. You'll notice that when we get into the drop zone, it changes color. That indicates to the student that they're in the drop zone. So technically, even if it's here, it's considered in the bank. Um, so we go ahead and click Submit, and we are correct. Now here's another example of one. Again, the directions tell us to pull all the coins into the bank. So we have it set. So if all of these pennies are not in here, Whoops. it is not listed as correct. If we drag in just three coins that we think are pennies, Whoops. it will snap the incorrect ones back into their position. So we have our three pennies. There we go. So let's take a but look at all. how to do this with um, this example. So what I've gone ahead and done was I eliminated the link between our draggable items and our um, drop zone. So here's how you would add those back in. And to make sure that your drop zone is completely clear, you'll see that there's nothing listed here. I'll show you what it looks like in a second once we attach one. So to attach an answer choice to a drop zone, you click on the hand and you make sure you drag it over top of the flag. And that will link them together. Once they're linked, you can see that here there is a um, super long number that indicates that there is one thing linked to that. So we also want to link this penny. Same idea. You click on the hand, you drag it over, and it'll draw a line to link it. Again, we click on the drop zone. You see that there are two things here. You also notice this paper clip. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then we want to bring this third one over and that is linked. So we have one, two, three linked. We click on our drop zone. There are three things here linked. So this says at least one. What that means is as long as there is at least one of these in here, it will mark it as correct. We want all three to be in there. So we're going to click on this uh, paper clip. Now it says exactly one. So that means we have to have one of these coins in there. Not all three, just one. Click on it again, exactly two. We want exactly two of them. Well, we want all three. So we are going to click all. Um, or 
see as you click this, it kind of rotates through. We could also have it say exactly three. I like to keep it at exactly three because we have three coins. We want three of them in there. Um, and then let's preview to see if we've done this correctly. I'll go ahead and mute this audio. Whoops. So because it's looking for three and we don't have three, it marks it wrong. There it is. Let's say you want your answer choices to be randomized, like you can see over here. These coins are all mixed up. So it's actually a really simple thing to do if you set up your card in a certain way. Let's just think that we think all of these top three are our answers. We're going to go ahead and drag those in. This is, we didn't pay attention to the directions. We just picked the first three. Whoops. Oh, it only kept this one because it says put the dimes in the bank. So we have to find the dimes and put Whoops. them in there. It says it's wrong because there are three dimes and it's looking for three coins to be in here that are dimes. There we go. So let's go back and see how this is done. The one thing that I like about the randomize feature is that it's really just clicking a box on your card uh, or in <laughs> clicking an option into one of your cards. So this was the card that we were on, put the dimes in the bank. Notice how everything is nice and neat and organized on here. So, and you can also notice that these draggable dimes are all linked to this drop zone. The way that you randomize this, or unrandomize it if you don't want it to be random, is you click on your, this is, this is set up as a multiple um, picture. It's set up as multiple pictures. And we set up each of those pictures to be draggable. And then down here, it says randomize items. So if we have this clicked, it'll randomize these making sure that wherever these are placed, it still recognizes those as the answer. So again, if we look here and then we click preview, it will put them in a random order. So you can see that even though the dimes are spread out, if I drag them in, I will still be correct. Bonus tip, make sure you add a cool down to your activities if you're asking them to move. Now. I would definitely recommend you ask them to move because kids that are moving learn better, they're more engaged, they're more focused, uh, and they retain the information better because their brain is powered on. But it's important that we cool them down at the end if we're adding in movement. So some deep breathing, something simple, a stretch, anything that you throw in there would be beneficial. Honestly, I feel like I just scratched the surface with this topic. I'm sure there's a lot more that we can get into. If there's anything in particular, again, leave a comment down below. And now I'll turn it over to Nora for her Nora Nugget. Oh. Hey there, Coach. You should tell everybody that they should look down in the description to find a link to some exercise gifts and some exercise pictures that they can use to make their activities active. See ya. I'm Nora.